five inch Oshkosh 2018 to discuss something new and I think very exciting. Yes, it's about aircraft, but it's more than about aircraft. It's about people and not just people, but young people. I'm Dan Johnson and I'm talking with two gentlemen here, David Newell and Tom Beckenbauer. And you're gonna tell me some things about a youth program that you've got going on. We'll get to the airplane in a minute, but tell me how the youth play into this and what your aspirations for the program are, David. Well, the first big aspiration is to start getting youth in upper middle school and high school well aware of aviation as a possible career, as an experience, to become pilots, engineers, even just advocates for us at the local airports. Sounds like a great way to start them off going. What age group are you targeting with this, David? We want to start down at the seventh grade level huh? where they're beginning to get thoughts about things they want to do in the future. And right now they're living with electronic devices in their hands and that's where they're getting most of this information. They need to actually see some things with wings in order to get themselves interested. Well, we all love those devices. You can't walk around without seeing people staring at their screens anymore, youth or not youth. But, there, and that's great, but there's a lot more in the physical, tangible world that they can experience relative to aviation, isn't there? Correct. What we like to do is get them seat of the pants, stick in the hand, wind in her hair, smile on his face, skies in his eyes, and not electrons on eyeballs. And you missed breeze on their knees, I guess, and that's about <laughs> all, so good job there. <laughs> oh, I like that, and obviously you're conversant and talking about this project, that's great. Uh, pass the microphone to your cohort here, and Tom, tell me, uh, tell me a little bit more about what your expectations for this are in the, in the foreseeable future. Where's, where's this gonna go from what David outlined there? We're in the prototype development right now, uh, we're developing a curriculum that will be used in a charter school that we're working with. And our goal is to take this young person who has come out of an eagle, young eagle's flight, who's excited about flying, and we want to give them the next step, the place to go, and give them some basics in learning how to fly. Uh, we want to help them see, as David mentioned, the career opportunities. But we really want to get them up in the air. It's not something that's available to most young people right now. Expenses, location, that type of thing. So we want to keep the expense down. We want to bring it to the kids. And at the same time, we want to teach the kids life lessons. There's so many things that can be learned in flying about judgment, situational awareness, decision making, uh, playing by the rules. Uh, and those are the types of... And the laws of physics and in the this laws case. Of physics, that's right. So uh, we're hoping to show this new generation that there's other options besides uh, the digital world and the drug world. We want to get them uh, high, but high on flying. Okay, I like high that. On the life. sound of that is all great. Really good program there. Now, so if you're starting with uh, uh, kids that age, they're about 12 years old then, the youngest of them. That's correct. Is there a range up to some number that you kind of keep it in that range? Well, we're looking to get up to the high school seniors. Okay, okay. So uh, age yeah. 12 up to yeah. seniors in high school. Right. And our, go our goal is to kind of prime the pre-pilot pipeline. So we're making this accessible to kids from inner city to the wealthiest uh, locations you can think of. They're coming then into a wonderful them. time. If they know about aviation, the uh, job market in that space, I think, is going to be very good, not just for pilots. You mentioned mechanics, David, and it's going to include them as well, and all the other support jobs needed to keep airplanes flying. Yes, indeed, that's so for let's, sure. So uh, those are all great broad parameters. Let's get to some specifics now. Why don't you hand that microphone back to David and tell me what aircraft and what the kids are going to be doing with that aircraft first and then later on. When we started to look at how to do this program, and we're emulating the program that's been done for over 20 years in Europe, we looked at their hardware. Well, it's successful, so why don't we just buy it? Problems with acquiring the aircraft from Europe, and at the same time, we kind of like the idea of a USA built and supported machine. We came up last year to Oshkosh, and we looked at everything in the ultralight world. We settled on, and we didn't settle, we really liked the Kolb for two really good reasons. It puts a steel cage frame around the youth. They're sitting down into that seat, 
getting the harness around them. So they're protected on the sides, which the typical primary glider does not do. And so that was the first reason. The second reason we really like a Kolb is because it's got folding wings that are robust, and we can fold the wings, go into the trailer, show up at a high school. We are, we've timed it 15 minutes from off the trailer to wings erect and on what we call the first phase plane on a post where it's sitting and wind jamming. Ah, so with okay. eight knots of a breeze, we can have a youth in there in 15 minutes and he or she is flying in their mind. 10 knots, it's fun. This is a real thing and we've had children in and actually doing this and that's kind of a neat thing. This eliminates the problem of, I can't take kids to the airport, the bus can't go there, the school program won't do it. And frankly, when we drive it to most airports, they're not all that friendly looking now with all the security stuff around them. Unfortunately, those big black fences around airports are sort of a stay away signal. Absolutely, so we bring something to them that looks like aviation. We're trying to bait it and set the hook. Now, if they're interested at that point and the high school or youth aviation group has a program we can fit with, then we move to what we call flying on the line where we're leashed with a 5 foot, 10 foot, 15 foot lead that lets the airplane do slow speed taxi, little higher speed elevator and rudder and hopping little higher speed, we start ground skimming, and then we can start learning to land left and land right. In Europe, they would have it at about 65 to 80 missions. A student would be good enough at that point, if qualified, to go off the end of the line for a very short free flight in ground effect to a landing target. I can't say enough of what Brian and Helen have done for us, especially when it comes to support. We have had a few bits and pieces that we needed to do again, and it was 24 <laughs> hours later in our hands, and, and we were ready to go start installing things. That defines good customer service. And, and uh, re the response has just been wonderful. So that was a key piece. We went down, visited the operation, looked at the hardware. Uh, we had never covered an airplane before. We got to watch the, the two of you were talking about the, now, right? the two of us. Okay, all right. And so uh, we went from no knowledge to now barely experienced, and <laughs> we did that but by watching the videos uh, of Brian and Helen doing that expert work, and it, it, we watched hours of videos before we got on the airplane. So the the whole aspect of what they have done for us and then the suggestions they've had why don't we take a look at doing this on the final version so we're in a prototype mode we're going to learn a lot of things with the kids this is like any other <clears throat> airplane or ground effect machine you put the lieutenants in you're going to learn things you didn't expect when we get these kids into our program one of the first things they're going to do is get a kit and build this ah, aircraft. Okay, so this is not just learning theory and doing some little bit of flying. You're going to learn about building as well. That's correct. Okay. They're going to learn how to pull a rivet. They're going to learn how to measure and place a rib. And they're going to learn how to cover and then put the coating on it. So they're going to get some real skills uh, developed. Can they follow what you're doing as well or do they just discover what's going on? And that is, can they see the steps along the way through your web address? Uh, we have three ways that people can keep up with Please what we're doing. educate us about those. Yep, we'll be using our, our web, www.cupertinoclubs.org. Uh, we'll also be on Facebook, Cupertino Aviation Clubs. And we also have a newsletter that we'll be sending out if people will text CAC, text to a number. The, the number that they're going to text to is 84576. 84576. Right. We'll put that up on the screen for folks. And then what happens? When they text that, what do they get? Well, they'll get an initial email that will welcome them to our website and then or to our newsletter. And then we will put out periodic updates. So. Sounds pretty good. Sounds like a great plan. Sounds like you've thought this through quite carefully. Kudos on uh, planning such a great effort to bring youth into aviation and giving those people a great steer in their lives, plus helping all of us who are currently enjoying this activity to see new ones come up. Well, we believe that youth can fly, and we want to make it happen. All right, sounds great, fellas. Where are you located, by the way? We're in Anderson, Indiana. Anderson, Indiana, yes. okay. All right, great. Well, we're going to keep track of what's going on here as we follow, of course, Cole, one of our favorite companies in the light aircraft business. And as they go along, we'll be following this on your website as well and be looking for you next year here at Oshkosh. I hope that'll all come together and we can see the final iteration of this thing and maybe hear about your early successes with the program.
That sounds great to us, Dan. Great stuff. You can find more about Kolb and all kinds of affordable aviation on bydanjohnson.com. Thanks for joining David Newell, Tom Beckenbauer, and myself here in the wonderful space at Kolb as we hear more about this project. Thank you, David. Thank you.